Morning folks, Andy Truck Davy and the Truck. Coming to you this morning from my hometown of Easter House in Glasgow, where it is a beautiful morning and it's 14 degrees. It's going to be a lovely day. Okay. Um, review of the week. I, oh, I decided not to go live because when I've listened to it back, the quality of sound's not as good as what it is when I'm a video on the things. I will do a live stream from my home, a live stream from my home and say, we'll do a bit of question and answer. You can ask me anything. If I don't know the answer, I'll make it clear. If I do know the answer, I'll give you the answer. And if I've just given you my opinion, I'll let you know it's my opinion I'm giving you on the subjects you're asking about. Ask about absolutely anything except for some pretty private stuff. <laughs> Alright, anyway, here we go. It's a, first we'll start with the coronavirus update and then we'll go on to the review of the week, okay? I've tried to make the review of the week a wee bit light-hearted. Um, still some serious stuff in it, but I've tried to make it a wee bit lighter, okay? Right, here we go. Coronavirus update. These figures are for the 30th of the 4th, 2020, and uh, the figures um, don't include the national record of Scotland's weekly figures, okay? So here we go. Tested in Scotland... 54,639, that's only up 1,500 odds. Supposed to be getting to 3,500 a day. I don't know whether that's capacity or actual test that they want a day, but I believe they've got the capacity to do that amount. Okay? But, as I say, that's the amount tested. Tested positive, 11,353. Active cases, those in hospital, IC units, or recovering at home, 3,555 deaths. Unfortunately, the death toll was up to 1,475. This is hospital deaths only. Um, and that's an increase of 60 over the 24 hours from the 29th to the 30th. Okay. <laughs> Not good. Today in our briefing, um, Nicola will set out how she intends to um, expand on the testing and who she would like to test. Alright, anyway, let's go on to the review of the week. Monday, Bojo's back to the pleasure of the right-wing uh, media who start fawning, you know, uh, yay, the saviours are turned. Good old Blighty needs its Prime Minister. Well, if good old Blighty needs Boris Johnson, then surely Blighty should be in the bloody madhouse. Anyway, he comes out with a third thumping speech about how we have beaten this or how we're on top of this. I don't know where he gets that idea with 50,000 deaths. And uh, that we're flattening the curve and it's nearly time to fire up the engines of this huge, great economy. Which actually isn't the number five as they keep boasting. It was number seven last time I looked and, and sliding down the ranks rapidly. All right. Um, so after Bojo's bombastic super duper return, the idiot Rab's put up to do the night, nightly briefing down south. And the, um, reporters asked the question, if uh, the UK government would be carrying out a public inquiry into its handling of the coronavirus when this is over. He said, I have a no of a mind to do that. They're a surprise, eh? And a separate question. They were asked to name the members of the SAGE um, Committee. That's the UK Government Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies. They declined to name the people that were on it. Okay? Uh, what we do know is that Google, the Google's chief execs on it and Dominic, uh, and Dominic Commons is on it. Apart from that, we don't know very much about it. Um, Jean Freeman, the Scottish Secretary, at uh, the briefing earlier in the day, was asked the same questions. Will there be an inquiry into Scottish, the Scottish Government's handling of the coronavirus um, epidemic? To which she said, yes, of course there will be. And when asked about this, the, the newly, con a, a newly constructed, or the newly put together um, Scottish, advisory, a Scottish Advisory Group, um, to advise the Scottish Government 
Um, Miss Freeman quite quite clearly stated you get the names on the website. So the Scottish Government Scientific Advisory Group are all named what their specialities are, everything. It's all there in the public eye. Westminster, no, nothing. Okay. And just to ruin Boris Johnson's fantastic return to the plaudits of the right wing press, BBC put on a panorama programme that slapped him right across the kisser. <laughs> it was a belter. I had to watch it three times, it was like a horror. Wow. Oh. There were times when I was nearly in tears. Anyway, <laughs> that was a that was the start of Bojo's day, man. Bombastic speech, slapped by his idiot rab, slapped by the BBC. Heads a row at the BBC for that. <laughs> right, on to Tuesday. Tuesday's an odd good day. Uh, First Minister advised Scots. Hey, she advised, she didn't tell Scots that it might be a good idea to cover up your face and enclose public spaces to protect, um, know yourself, but to, to protect the people around you. Because uh, if you've got a mask on, droplets are no escaping. You know, what she didn't want people to do was to go out and buy these things, clinical masks. I managed to buy one and he's at a snack bar the day. Can you believe that? Anyway, um... <laughs> She advises a uh, Scots it'll be a good idea to put masks on to protect the greater community and enclose public spaces. And right away, the three unionist parties stroke English parties in the Scottish Parliament start stamping their feet, jumping up and down, making noises, telling her she's political point scoring, telling her to shut up and don't, hey, how dare you get out your box, get back in your box, like that. Hey, um, hey, how dare you preempt the UK government? You know? It was, it was almost comical, you know, at the same time serious. Here we have three parties in the Scottish Parliament, Lib Dems, Red Tories, formerly known as Labour, and Blue Tories, telling the, the First Minister how dare she advise the Scottish public to take um, precautionary, um, precautionary, action, precautionary actions which could save members of their community. How dare she? was what uh, these three parties were saying. Shut up, Nicola. Don't you dare say anything that Westminster isn't to tell you today. And if that means mere Scottish people die, then that's what's going to happen. According to these three cuckoo parties in the Scottish Parliament, absolutely disgusting. The fallout for the Pan Panorama programme um, starts to hit the Westminster administration. It doesn't look good. The proverbial has hit the fan. Matt Hancock tries to defend his government and public health England, but fails miserably. He actually sat in a broadcast and said that he would reuse PPE if that was the guidance. You know. What a spanner. He also went on to rubbish the idea of covering your face in order to prevent droplets getting to getting out into the atmosphere and into the community uh, and the virus spreading further in the community we're an absolute plank of wood he, st he stated that there was poor evidence um, whereas as we know internationally as we look at communities um, countries that have uh, told their people to cover their faces and the death rates much lower than here in the UK so to say that the evidence was crap about covering your faces, that's not true. There's even governments out there that have got it mandatory. Including the, the Germans are now making it a mandatory and all. You know, um, and if we look at the countries that uh, have the lowest death rates, they have always instructed, they, they have always advised that their public wear a uh, face mask and enclosed covered spaces. You couldn't make that stuff up. And also on Tuesday, Rishi Sunak reveals a new way to rob the pub the public. He puts in a new uh, 150,000 loan guaranteed by you and me for small and medium enterprises. Excellent. Small and medium enterprises that are about to go tits up are going to take this money, shut their doors and walk away. Idiot. How the man go to be Chancellor, I don't know, but hey, you know, if we have a look at the cabinet that Boris Johnson's put together, <laughs> What can one see? 
Um, right, on to Wednesday. Wednesday. Hey. Bojo's batting a side stroke future wife. Gives birth to a son. Now, listen, this is the guy who dumped his wife who was suffering from cancer. Took up with a secretary that was 23 years younger than him. Knocked her up the duff. Got engaged to her because he'd knocked her up the duff. And then while she was up the duff and before he moves into number 10, there's a big rammy because he's banging some waitress on the side while she's pregnant. Anyway, the son's been born and it's a... All happy families and they're all moving back to number 10. There's a wedding on the horizon. <laughs> He's such a man of high moral integrity is Mr. Johnson. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. I did say I was going to try and make us a wee bit early <laughs> Ah, First Minister hits back at the three um, a Cuckoos in the nest, the three English parliament, eh, parties in the Scottish Parliament for their stupid childish behaviour, politicise and everything, when there was an agreement not to politicise this public health eh, emergency. But, you know, car crash, um, Leonard, and Wee Wally Who, there's two Who's now. There's a eh, Richard Leonard Who, and there's Wee Wally Rennie Who, and then there's car crash, who is, of course, the field dodgy second hand car salesman and alleged cat uh, um alleged heart thief. Well the quality of leadership in these English parties in Scotland is <laughs> phenomenal. Anyway, she has a go at them. So they start stamping their feet again and demands that she follows Westminster's lead. Keeps her mouth shut until after Westminster speaks. Uh, um They're absolutely outraging because actually when you have a look at the timeline as we've went through this a uh, um, epidemic stroke pandemic, you know it's Nic Nicola Sturgeon's announced what she's going to do and the Westminster government's followed suit. It's almost as if Bojo and his clowns are sitting there saying, let's just wait to hear and see what Nicola's going to do and we'll follow suit. Because they haven't got a clue. Their scientific advisory body, which is quite interesting because uh, <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, the scientific advisory board, he hasn't got any, any intellectual giants on it, right? And the, uh, so, the Westminster, the, the English parties in the Scottish Parliament and uh, gets a slap by the, um, First Minister and tell to behave themselves. Right, the new statesman sticks a boot into Bojo and all. Um, what day we on? Wednesday. The new statesman stick the boot, sticks the boot into Bojo and all um, by doing an expose on his cabinet being the worst and weakest cabinet that he has ever he faced, uh, that the UK got, uh, that the, the UK has ever had. And when it came to dealing with emergencies, this is the worst government the UK uh, um, government has ever had. But to compound problems for, for uh, Boris Johnson, the... 1922 Club, which is actually the Tory party, that's where all the grandees and all the money are. These are the people that drive port and Tory policy and they decide who's going to be Prime Minister and who's no. They hat out at Boris Johnson and all for the inexperience of his cabinet and the lack of a, um, any form of credible people in his cabinet. And they also have a wee kick at him about this, uh, the scientific advisory group for emergencies and how how poorly it's staffed. Um, well, Wednesday didn't go well for Bojo either. Um, as I say, the 1922 <laughs> committee, and they are the Tory party, that's the big beasts in the Tories. They're not happy with this rookie um, a cabinet that Boris Johnson, Brexiteer cabinet as Boris Johnson's put together. Don't forget the 1922 club are Brexiteers, they are the disaster, disaster cap, cap, uh, capitalists, but they are the Tory party. Whatever they say goes. So we could see some heads rolling in this cabinet shortly. Hey, on to Thursday. The Guardian reveals that UK government is advertising for experts to join the SAGE, <laughs> the SAGE group. <laughs> 
after the Guardian exposed the fact that there was no actual social scientists or civil scientists or a, any actual intellectual giants um, on this on this sage group, they were all people like a uh, data mining companies and political a uh, spin doctors. Um, all of a sudden. There's an advert going out for the UK government looking for scientific advisors to join the age group. <laughs> Where have they been, Dean? Where were these bloody advisors when this started? It's like I said, this didn't have to hit these islands. Could have sent for the bloody Royal Engineers. They'd have caused the whole fuck... Pardon, I haven't this one a long time. They would have caused the whole bloody place down. They have a whole department that is there to cover disaster management. And the first thing they do when they get on the ground, if they're in front of the disaster, then they go full out disaster prevention. And this disaster could have been present, uh, prevented. <coughs> I said this earlier in the week. A third term junior leader, Royal Engineer, for the barracks at Dover, a 17 year old, could have made a better hash of this. First thing we'd have done was give the UK government a bloody geography lesson, then it'd have grounded everything. Everything. Pulled the drawbridges up, only essential traffic in and out. Flights in the air would only be people repatriated, medicines and foods. Stuff coming through the ports would only be medicines and foods. But no! This shower of crap ads at Westminster having to get a scooby. We are now about, well, they, had, they, they knew it was coming in January. But March last month is when they started actually taking any action. We are now on the first day of May. And they're advertising for experts to go into the SAGE committee. What the actual is going on? You know. <coughs> hey. Unionists in the English party are still stamping their feet going absolutely mental about Nicola's divergence and Nicola leading this situation because Westminster's always following her lead and they are not happy about her giving advice about face masks, we're going to do that again. Right, but day three, cuckoo parties in Scotland, the unionists here got a big slap in the face for their imperial masters in London when Bojo took to the podium last night and says, going forward, face masks will be a good idea, especially in the work environment. Remember, this is the guy that was talking on Monday about firing up the British economy, so we expect, I expected this week there would be some change, but I expect by next week, by the 7th of May, that there will be some lo loosening up, and sectors will be sent back to work too early. Um, so, face masks all of a sudden are in vogue. Huh? You know, after spending all week, Criticising Nicola Sturgeon, the UK press, and the three English parties and the Scottish Parliament, the cuckoos in the nest, all spent the week screaming, You can't do that, Westminster didn't say so, you can't do that, Westminster didn't say so, you can't do so, wait for Westminster to speak first. They got a big almighty slap in the puss after the head honcho, Bojo the Clown, Boris Johnson. It was hilarious, I nearly fell off the chair laughing. I really did nearly fell off the chair laughing, right? Eh, uh, something you wouldn't get in the UK press. The Toronto Sun reports that the FBI and lawyers for girls trafficked by Jeffrey Epstein are after Prince Andrew's phone records. Alright, you're not going to hear about that here. But remember, Prince Andrew was a friends with, um, a, the people trafficker mainly young girls for sex, Jeffrey Epstein. Nobody quite worked out where his fortune came from, but now we know he was trafficking kids to the rich and the powerful and the elite. <coughs> so, you won't get that in the press. You won't see that in the UK press. As I say, it was sent to me by a friend in Canada. He says, look at this, David. He says, I bet you don't get that in the UK press. Well, there you have it. <coughs> The FBI and lawyers um, for the, the girls that were trafficked by Jeffrey, Jeffrey Epstein are wanting access to Prince Andrew's phone records. They're not going to get it, but they want access to it. 
Right, what else we got? Um, yeah. I wonder how that wee woman from Edinburgh was on the Jeremy Fine show feels after coming out saying we won't wear face masks because they sort of stood and said it. Anyway, I'd need to breathe back in my own germs. All of a sudden, Bojo's saying that they're going to get her back on for the Artie Hill, her imperial master for being a wise sage. <laughs> uh. Right, Friday. Well, I don't ever have much on Friday because obviously this show goes early in the morning, but I picked a few things up this morning. Aye, ah, yeah, that's a cracker. The Guardian, once again, putting a boot into Bojo and his administration, um, deals a further blow to an already crippled and weakened UK cabinet um, by exposing the fact that the Public Health England and the Westminster had ordered 250 ventilators for China. They had arrived and they were such shoddy, poor quality, that they had to be battered into the bin. That shows you, once again, that the, the Health Secretary, Mark, Matt Hancock, the English Health Secretary, Matt Hancock, is no fit for purpose. 250 ventilators that, that we, they'd ordered, got here, and they were so dangerously put, badly put together, that doctors and health officials were throwing them straight in the bin. Unbelievable. Hancock should be sacked, and he maybe even should be um, put on trial for recklessly endangering the English public. Public Health England, you know, whoever's in charge of that, also needs to be dragged in front of the courts. But hey, it's not going to happen. The Tories will spin it. Oh, aye, and also this morning, the Guardian's reporting that a... Uh, any inquests into the deaths of healthcare workers from coronavirus in England have not to look at the issue of PPE. Can you imagine that? These people are dying because they lack of PPE or inadequate PPE. And the inquests into their deaths are not permitted to look at the issue of PPE. Somebody else needs to be jailed for that. Eh? Aye, um. in the press this morning, all of a sudden, face coverings are a great idea. The wise and mighty sage Boris Johnson says face coverings are a great idea, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday were a bad idea because it was a private, it was the First Minister's idea. Yesterday, Bojo says a great idea. All of a sudden, all the press right across the UK, face coverings are a great idea. You can make this stuff up, right? Now, in a wee, um, another wee story, Prince William was gone mad trying to find the can opener. He was actually screaming for an inquiry into what happened to his can opener until his wife Kate told him he'd followed them until the end of the, <laughs> the epidemic. <laughs> okay, could you make that one? That was brilliant. Hey, oh, and finally, on a very serious note, Andy Truck Davy reports that his pad, his trusty pad, has run out of memory. And it's gone, he need replaced. But on the bright side, <coughs> the 300 sheet memory lasted no bad, and there's no crowdfunded required. I'll just nip down to John Menzies and buy an hour and two pound. <laughs> so that's the death of Davy's pad. <laughs> Right, listen, I hope this podcast is alright, I hope you enjoy it, um, I tried to be a wee bit light hearted with some of the things, because it has been really serious. Weather forecast is not looking too bad for the weekend, no further than your gardens. Stay home, stay safe, help break the chain of transmission, help keep the front line, help, uh, front line health workers safe, the home helps, the cleaners, the shop assistants, and me! Help keep us safe. Stay home. Obey the rules. If you have to be in enclosed public spaces, wear a mask. Don't wear one of these ones, because the hospitals need them. 
All right. Cover your face. Follow all the guidelines. And we will crack this. Life will get back to normal. Right. As I say, follow the guidelines. Help break the chain of transmission. Help keep those of us who have to come out to work safe. And help keep your family and your community safe. Right. As I say, I don't broadcast at the weekend. Normally. I don't normally broadcast. Well, I don't do Indy Truck Davy at the weekend. Let's put it that way. I do put out stuff as myself, David McGuinness. But, eh, uh, and I will be, I'll be broadcasting tomorrow night on YouTube with Sharon, Sharon Sunshine Young and Erica C, an American boy that runs a YouTube channel. I'll be doing their program tomorrow night. But as I say, I generally don't broadcast as Indy Truck Davy at the weekend. That might change because I might have to do the question and answer thing we were talking about yesterday at the weekend. I haven't moved to a live format because eh, it might be difficult with all the questions coming up for me to concentrate on what I'm doing, alright? So, have a nice day, have a nice weekend, stay home, stay safe, help break the chain of transmission, we can get back to normal again, alright? Bye now.